All right, welcome to Lead and Love. It is February 8th, 2023. Woo, less than a week to America's Love Day <laughs> of Valentine's Day, but we're not going there today. We are not going there. Oh my gosh. So today is almost like prepping for war. Oh my gosh. Hey, Cheyenne. So, um, yeah, it is going to be lead as in lead the charge, right? Here we go. We are preparing for war. <laughs> All right. So we are going to start off with our scripture verses. We are going to go into our X theme for the month of February. And then I'm going to share what am I talking about with going into war and leading ourselves there um, and share. I actually have two um, video segments that I'm going to share with you. So each of them is about five, six minutes long. Um, so that'll be a, a good portion. And then me just sharing in between those and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, so let's jump in. We have our three 12-12 verses. The first one is Romans 12-12. Rejoice in hope, be patient under trial, persevere in prayer. Our feed, that was seed, feed scripture verse is Luke 12-12. The Holy Spirit will teach you at that moment all that should be said. You know, you guys, I talked last week about how I prepare for these. And, you know, most often the preparation is coming from Luke 12, 12. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will teach you right before lead in love, right? What I want you to share. I really do feel like it's spirit led. Um, and every week, every week it is. And then our lead verse, 1 Corinthians 12, 12. The body is one and has many parts, but all the parts, many though they are, we are one body. And so our X theme for the month in February is our X word is extend, extend a helping hand. So have that heart of a servant. That is what we are called to do, right? Be servants. And therefore, uh, do not be anxious about anything. Interesting. This was not planned. I just realized that. This is our, that's one of the X theme words. Scripture verses. I've had this for years, you guys. For years, I have operated from this thing. And that is, of course, Philippians 4, 6. But it's mentioned in one of the videos. I totally didn't plan that. Do not be anxious for anything. Interesting. See, God is so good. He just works all things together. It's pretty amazing. So, all right. So what I want to share with you guys today, like I said, really comes from me, what I'm doing, either what I'm sharing with others, what I'm, you know, just in the world. It, it is just fresh and fresh. And so when I heard Darren Hardy's message today, I was like, yes, right on, right on. In fact, yesterday, the day before, when I was communicating with my good friend, Melissa, we box almost every day and we talk once a week and um, we're really just good running buddies, accountability partners for each other. And um, she mentioned the word survival and that she had heard somewhere in her um, career that sometimes survival is success, right? Just to be surviving is that is success. But then Melissa in her wisdom said, you know, I heard that and it's true. And I think she said it came from um, national sales director, Jan Thetford. She said, but I'm also a little concerned as I look back that maybe I've stayed in survival mode like too long right? And so like made that the success. And so she's kind of questioning how, you know, we can do that. We can take a, a true statement, right? And kind of turn it into something else. So that was kind of like on the top of our minds, right? Like that, that kind of reflection. Well, then here comes today, Darren Hardy, which I'm going to show you next. Um, and so when he spoke, I'm like, that only is not only a new, not a new spin, but I think a more accurate spin on that word survival. So you're going to hear that word, but also something that I have been personally, and I think I've been kind of dropping little messages about that, um, this word remember. Does that sound familiar at all? Like I have to keep reminding myself and, and remember that's going to come back. So let me start with Darren's message um, and then reflect a little bit more on that. So here we go. If you've already seen Darren Hardy's message for today, bonus you get to see it again all right all right this morning we're here to help you become mentally tough it was the great muhammad ali who said in the big leagues everybody has ability it takes and it comes down to 
mind games. Whoever is more mentally strong wins. Well, this is the big leagues. This is life we're talking about here. And that quote is true inside and outside of the ring. Let me say it again for your notes. Everyone has ability. It always comes down to mind games. Whoever is more mentally strong wins. It's true. Everyone has ability. You have great abilities, whether you see them or not, whether you choose to realize them or not, you have the ability to succeed at those things that you want. But in the end, it will come down to your mind. If you become mentally strong, you will win. If you don't, you will be left to envy those who do. So this morning, let's toughen you up. You ready? Here's the deal. I have bad news and then I have good news. So let's start with the bad news, shall we? The bad news is you are mentally weak. It's true. We all are, in fact. As humans naturally, left to our own innate tendencies, our minds are weak, at least when it comes to achieving your big, hairy, and audacious goals. Your mind is what sabotages you the most. The epic battle of your life will be defeating the natural will of your own mind. Your body can do way more than your mind wants to allow it to do and your potential is far greater than your mind wants you to stretch and go for. If you don't have the body, strength, life, or success that you want, I'm telling you, it's your mind's fault. This might be surprising to you. You might be thinking, well, why would my mind want to do this to me? Why is it sabotaging me? Why is it holding me back? Well, to answer that, we have to look at the agenda and the self-interest of the mind. The mind, you see, your brain, has only one agenda, which is survival at all costs. Survival is its only job, and it takes that job very seriously and is very good at it. But outside of that, it has no interest, and it will work against whatever you are trying to do if it is a potential threat to its safety or its survival. You see, when you are running or biking up a hill or climbing a mountain, it will tell you to stop, that you can't go any further or any longer, far before your body's true limit. The interesting thing is, though, when survival is threatened, Your brain can get you to finally tap into that raw, awesome potential that you had inside you all along. You remember the Incredible Hulk? Well, you live your life like David Banner until you're threatened. Then something triggers inside. That's when the Incredible Hulk is awakened and it comes alive. Then you can do the most incredible things. The woman who complains to her trainer that the 20 pound dumbbells are too heavy for her, sees her son about to get crushed by a car that has fallen off its jack with her son under it, her survival instincts kick in and the Incredible Hulk emerges and she lifts that car up with her bare hands, holding it off its wheels long enough for the neighbors to come over and pull her son out to safety. That's a true story, by the way. The guy who is squeamish about cutting the Thanksgiving turkey gets his arms stuck in a rock formation is about to die until the Hulk comes out and saws off his arm with a blunt tool to survive. You already know that that's a true story. You saw that at the movies. At the survival game, your mind is a freaking champ. That's how we got here. That's how we've made it so long. Outside of survival though, your brain is weak or better stated, not interested. It lives like David Banner. It only activates your incredible Hulk power under threat alert, danger, and survival. Now, the good news is this. You can hack into that power. In the ludicrous course of the Insane Productivity Curriculum, I teach six very strategic ways to hack your brain brain, to draw out that incredible Hulk power to achieve big-ass goals. We don't have the time to cover all those here, but I do want to walk you, have you walk away with a few things that you can do starting right here this morning. Let's pick an area that you want to be better at, a weakness that you want to conquer, an area that you want to be more mentally tough in. Is it your health? Is it sales prospecting? Is it how you spend your money? What? Just pick one thing and write it down. Then the first hack is to scare your brain straight. Put it under threat. Fear is your friend when it comes to stimulating your mind. Look, you can set out all sorts of aspirational goals, hopes, dreams, and desires. Those are a snore to your brain. Who cares? It says blah, 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 not interested. But threaten it? Show it danger, spell out dire consequences, and you have its full attention and its full potential. So start with spelling out the consequences if you don't change this behavior or habit. Take it out to its most dire and terrible consequences and outcome. Threaten it. You'll get its attention and thus its incredible potential. What will happen if you don't change your eating habits? Talk to people who have diabetes. 
people who have suffered strokes and heart attacks. Talk to the loved ones of those who have lost, lost parents too early due to poor choices. What will happen if you don't grow your sales, your commissions, your business? How would it affect your family if you went bankrupt? Drive over to the other side of the tracks where people who quit on their goals have to live. Write down all the people who would be disappointed by your failure. What kind of shame would you feel? What other embarrassing consequences would it cause? Trust me, that in your mind, you can do some amazing things when it wants to, but only when it wants to. Its motivation is only triggered when it's threatened and attacked. Tomorrow, I'll cover two more important ways to hack your brain and take control of its awesome power for self-actualization, not just mere survival. Today, just focus on the first point. Identify the one area that you want to become more mentally tough in, then go scare the hell out of your brain. Just make sure you aren't wearing your Sunday best when the green Incredible Hulk busts loose. And I'll see you right back here tomorrow, and we will continue to supercharge your mental prowess. All righty. Okay, so that was Darren's message for today. If you don't... Um, get Darren Hardy. I don't know how to just reach out to me afterwards. Okay. But I would definitely highly recommend, right? Watching the next two <laughs> for sure. That one really spoke to me one because of what I said before, but also, um, it, it reminded me of a concept that again, Melissa and I have been talking about for a few months now. And, and the reality that, you know, sometimes, uh, especially among the, the family of the faithful, um, we can blame the devil for a lot right? You know, like the, the devil, I mean, it's true. There is spiritual warfare, but at the same time, there is this, what, um, what Darren was talking about, you know, like the way we are wired for survival and to hack it, to attack it, right? Because this is a war and we have to know the enemy. If you're going to win a war, right? And because it's not just like tiptoe through the gardens to your goals, we know, right? It is a, a fight, you know, you have to get through the struggles, the obstacles. That's what makes the victory so sweet. Well, we can't expect to win a fight if we don't know the enemy. And resistance is the enemy. You, your brain will literally resist you, okay? And so one of the things that, um, again, we've been talking about, I have been telling Melissa about and what Darren talks about. I had read years ago, you can't see it because it's blurry, but it's a, a book by Stephen Pressfield called The War of Art little spin on not the <laughs> art of war, <laughs> but the war of art. And of course, he's an author and, and he, the subtitle is Break Through the Blocks and Win Your Inner Creative Battles. And so I'm going to just read a few things from this book. Um, and so I don't even know. I think it's still out in publication. She tried to find it. We had a little bit of trouble. But again, let me know if you, if you can't find something. But Here's a few things that I just want to share with you because it, it's just so powerful. There's a secret that real writers know that wannabe writers don't. And the secret is this. It's not the writing part that's hard. What's hard is sitting down to write. What keeps us from sitting down is resistance. And he has that with a big R. Okay, so basically the enemy is resistance. And you can interpret, of course, he's doing it from the perspective of an artist as a writer. But we know what do artists do? They create, right? They create something beautiful. And isn't that what we're trying to do with our, our goals and our dreams? We are creating, right? Something new and beautiful. So he says, here's the, the following as a list in no particular order of those activities that most commonly elicit resistance. The pursuit of any calling in writing, painting, music, film, dance, creative art, however marginal or unconventional. The launching of any entrepreneurial venture or enterprise for profit or otherwise. Any diet or health regimen. Any program of spiritual advancement. Any activity whose aim is tighter abdominals. <laughs> any course or program designed to overcome an unwholesome habit or addiction. Education of every kind. Any act of political, moral, or ethical courage including the decision to change for the better, some unworthy pattern of thought or conduct in ourselves, the undertaking of any enterprise or endeavor whose aim is to help others, any act that entails commitment of the heart, the decision to get married, to have a child, to weather a rocky patch in a relationship, the taking of any 
principled stand in the face of adversity. In other words, any act that rejects immediate gratification in favor of long-term growth, health, or integrity, or any act that derives from our higher nature instead of our lower, these will elicit resistance. Okay, and he goes on. We are wrong if we think we are the only ones struggling with resistance. Everyone who has a body experiences resistance. I want to start with that because isn't that right? Like so true. We can think that like, especially in this world of Mary Kay, where you see a lot of success and we say celebrations, right? A lot. And you go, well, they're all figuring it out. I'm the only one struggling over here, right? <laughs> of how to get through this battle with resistance. And this is something else that Darren Hardy mentioned. Resistance's goal is not to wound or disable. Resistance aims to kill. <laughs> its target is the epicenter of our being, our genius, our soul, the unique and priceless gifts we were put on earth to give and that no one else has but us. Resistance means business. When we fight it, we are in a war to the death. That's why I said we are here at war. And that's your enemy. Is this, and it, for Melissa and I, it's been fun just to put like, really a name on it, right? Like when you're fighting something, you don't want to fight yourself. That's not a fun, <laughs> right? Like who wants to battle themselves? That's tough, right? But if you're like, okay, wait a second, that's that resistance with a capital R lingering in there. I can fight that. Resistance has no strength of its own. Every ounce of juice it possesses comes from us. We feed it with power by our fear of it. Master the fear and we conquer resistance, right? So, I mean, again, if you think about just wartime or even just like, you know, any type of battle, we don't want to go in afraid, right? Of the enemy, we've already succumbed. <laughs> so we go, okay, I know who you are. I know your little tricks. I know when you show up and this is how we prepare. Resistance obstructs movement only from a lower sphere to a higher it kicks in when we seek to pursue a calling in the arts or launch an innovative enterprise or evolve to a higher station, morally, ethically, spiritually, physically. So if you're in Calcutta working with the Mother Teresa Foundation and you're thinking of bolting to launch a career in telemarketing, relax, resistance will give you a free pass, <laughs> right? So you're not gonna get resistance going to something lower and easier and more you know, comfortable. It's always gonna be to the higher plane. All right, and then let's see, one more thing, a few more things. Procrastination is the most common manifestation of resistance because it's the easiest to rationalize. Y'all, this might hurt because it hurt me. We don't tell ourselves, I'm never going to write a symphony. Instead, we say, I'm going to write my symphony. I'll just start tomorrow, right? We don't say, I'm never going to make follow-up calls. We just say, it's the afternoon. I'll catch more people in the evening. You follow me? Procrastination and resistance. Woo -woo. That is the manifestation of it. All right. So again, I'm not going to read the whole book to you, obviously, but self-doubt can be an ally. This is because it serves as an indicator of aspiration. Interesting, right? It's an indicator, not evidence of how bad. But like, if I'm having self-doubt, oh, that's indicating that I'm aspiring to something. It reflects love, love of something we dream of doing and desire to do it. If you find yourself asking yourself and your friends, am I really a writer? Am I really an artist? Or am I really a leader in this Mary Kay thing, right? Can I really do that? Chances are you are. The counterfeit innovator is wildly self-confident. The real one is scared to death. All right. And then one more little thing to share. Resistance can be beaten. If resistance couldn't be beaten, there would be no Fifth Symphony, no Romeo and Juliet, no Golden Gate Bridge. Defeating resistance is like giving birth. It seems absolutely impossible until you remember that women have been pulling it off successfully with support and without support for 50 million years, as I said, <laughs> right? And so that just made me think of our, our Mary Kay world, right? So this is gonna, I'm gonna segue to the next video that I wanna share with you, but it can be beaten. 
And so even though at the beginning we started with seeing like we live in this world where you know those who have done it are praised and speak and celebrated and we go ah oh, they haven't they must not be dealing with what i do or you know somehow they have figured it out and i have they don't they don't have this resistance so the reality is they do but let's look at that as that's the hope that it can be beaten because resistance is something that we all deal with and that opens our ears. We want to hear even more. How did you beat resistance? And the thing, one of the other things that I didn't read from that book um, is that it doesn't go away. One of the um, paragraphs talked about Henry Fonda, um, that he still like threw up before he like went on stage or before he spoke, I'm, like 75 years old. So it's like that, it, it it never went away. It's something that it's going to have like a new face all the time. So, so I want to share with you one of the national, Stacey James, who has beat resistance um, this is a, a speech, I don't know, anyway, it doesn't really matter. But one of the things that we can do as we're fighting resistance um, is be prepared, right? To shore up, to equip ourselves. And one of the ways that I equip myself before, especially when I can feel it coming on, is to plug into a video, to remind myself that someone else has done it. <laughs> How have they done it? And so I'm also just giving you this example of, of like where to find it. So this one I actually found because I was like, I got to find something. Um, hold on. So I found it on Mary Kay University. Of course, there's stuff everywhere, but this one just happens to be, if you want to find it, um, on Mary Kay University in the, um, in one of the, whatever you call it, one of their, um, sorry, I'm getting everything ready at the same time. Um, lessons. I don't know. It's in Mary Kay University. You can find it. It's the first video section that they have. So here we go. Do you know that he works in the background on your behalf? Do you know that he opens doors for you? And on the other end of the doors, on the other side is whatever you need to equip you for the next journey to the next door. And so that we feel right now that we're lacking in something that is going to enable us to reach where we want to reach or be where we want to be. And we focus on what we feel like we're lacking when we are lacking in nothing, nothing. You are highly equipped and you have equipment within you that you have no idea that is going to be uncovered and discovered as you move forward. There is nothing to fear. You should be anxious for nothing. Yes? Okay, so story walking. As a consultant, I was teaching school. And we only had that car with the hole, it had a hole in the floorboard. And when you would drive over water and the old car that Brian and I had when I started in Mary Kay, then the water would splash in up through the hole in the floorboard all over my clothes, or it would be dirt and it would fly in my teeth and I would go pfft, 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 while I was driving that car. The car had the hole in the floorboard, I would stop <laughs> when it snowed, snow would fly in and through my car and it would like, I'd have to scrape the inside of the windshield and the outside of the windshield. Um, that was the car that I started my Mary Kay business with. And when I started making the money from my parties, I started, we started paying off debt and making progress. And it was very exciting, but we were very, 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 very far in debt. Very, very. <laughs> so at one point it started to feel like it was a big black hole. And no matter how much extra money I was making, it was like disappearing into that debt hole. And so I had um, a certain amount of money. It was a $20 bill every single Monday. And that $20 bill was gonna get me through for my lunches and some of my gas for all week um, for my teaching school. And so I dropped Brian off, I dropped Jennifer off, and I went to a, a store in um, Omaha, Nebraska called Hinky Dinky, grocery store. Hinky Dinky. I don't think it's so strange you guys have Piggly Wigglies. <laughs> and I was buying grapefruits for the week because I had grapefruits for lunch. I literally did. That was my lunch. And so I went into the grapefruit bin and I had my $20 bill in my hand and I was looking for my grapefruits for the week and I got them and I went to the cashier to pay for them. And when I got up there, I realized that I didn't have my $20 bill in my hand anymore. 
And so I went back to the grapefruit bin and I started throwing grapefruits in the air like a crazy person because sometimes when you don't have the money, you start to act in desperation. It's interesting the things that go on in our head when that happens. And um, I remember vividly walking out of that grocery store and I didn't have my money. And I remember looking down at the grating outside the door of the grocery store that was muddy and wet and snowy. And I remember the feeling of hopelessness. I remember getting into my car and the tears started to flow. I was already a consultant and I was making the money and I did have a dream and I was excited about what was going and I was making progress. But sometimes you have those moments when you don't feel like the progress is either happening fast enough or you forget you're making progress. And as the tears started to flow, those still wonderful words came to my heart. And this is what he said. I have given you everything to change your situation. You just need to do it. And that was the moment that I made a deep commitment. I thought I was committed, but I was actually kind of as a folly doing my business, having fun, making money, and wasn't realizing that the depth of the commitment was missing. Because the difference between just doing it for the heck of it, a little there, a little here, having fun with it, getting excited about it, or being highly committed to it is entirely different because of the depth of the commitment will make a difference on how quickly things happen, how quickly things happen. And from that moment on, I got highly, deeply, this is it, there's nothing else. I'm not gonna pursue anything else. I'm not gonna work on anything else. This is my future, this is the direction, and this is my hope. This is my hope. Now, the other part of that is that I want you to enjoy the process, not just the journey. Enjoy the process. Are you with me there? That means- All right. So if you want to see the beginning and the end, <laughs> then you can go to Mary Kay University, the greatness within you. Um, so I, I definitely wanted to show that with Stacy because to just show one, hello, how far? I mean, for those who are newer, I'm mean, Stacy Dames, multimillionaire, tip top of the company, right? Um, for from where she started, but that battle with resistance, even though she had already done something, had already made progress the battle remained, right? And then the, the mind switch of going deeper on that commitment. And so um, one of the things that we talk about is degree, right? And every day, that is our full circle way of living, right? And then R stands for repeat, repeat the vision. Well, just recently, I have not just been repeating, but also with kind of focus of remember, Remember some things. <laughs> remember either I, I started creating a remember file, things that would move my soul. I mean, like, I want to forget this. Remember this. And so literally in my remember file, that will also be what I go to during the day. Have I have I looked at my remember file, whether it's a, a story or a I, just something, I just whatever. If I just know I want to remember it. Um, and I feel like that R, right? It, it can be repeating affirmations. It can be repeating visions for the future. It can be repeating a remembering from the past, but I feel like in the present, talk about past, present, future, right? <laughs> right? You could stand in front of your vision board and look at it. You can remember things from the past, but in the present, that are, what are we going to do to resist resistance, right? Those are some things that we can do to resist resistance. And I was thinking, you know, we always have fun with, with our, our letters and being, you know, using the same letter, but I'm like, it's a ritual. It really has become a ritual to remember, to repeat, right? That vision, to reflect at the end of the night, to shore up and be like, I'm going to fight resistance. I see you. I know what you look like. And how can I fight it? And what can I do to fight it? Even if it's something like watching a, a video like that. And so I thought, well, we always need to go to scripture. And you all know this scripture, but Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. I will read it for you. 
You must put on the armor of God. If you are too, you're ready. What's the word? Resist. <laughs> if you, it's not just the resistance messing with you. Now we're going to put on the armor of God to resist on the evil day. Do all that your duty requires and hold your ground. Stand fast with the truth as the belt around your waist. Sometimes relying on truth statements, those daily affirmations, if they, they don't have to be like pie in the sky. They can be true statements based on scripture. With justice as your breastplate and zeal to propagate the gospel of peace as your footgear. In all circumstances, hold faith up before you as your shield. It will help you extinguish the fiery darts of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Y'all, that's the story of the sword. That was my scripture verse. I was taking that sword of the spirit, the word of God. But then you, sometimes people stop there, but I wanted to continue because that is kind of like the vision of the armor of God, the physical things. But then it continues at every opportunity, pray in the spirit using prayers and petitions of every sort. Pray constantly and attentively for all in the holy company. Mm. So after putting on that armor in constant prayer, which is of course, conversation with the Lord. So I just, I, I wanted to equip you for this war, but also empower you. One, that the ultimate war has been won, but man, are we the soldiers on the ground, right? Fighting to Use these gifts. I mean, we talk about using our gifts and our talents through this opportunity that we were planted in Mary Kay. What an amazing opportunity to bless others, to have the freedom to use our gifts, how we imagine our gifts to be used, how we desire our gifts to be used. That's the beauty of the freedom of this business, you guys, right? That it's very simple at the base and that we get to create as creators made in the likeness of God, create our little uniqueness in this Mary Kay opportunity to bless others, right? To share and show love. And that is how we're going to lead ourselves into this battle victorious, right? And so that is my message for you today, to have the hope that we started off with. Rejoice in hope. Be patient under that trial. Persevere in prayer. Now you have some more meat <laughs> to attach to that. So as we kind of wrap things up, we know attract number grows, right? And so I hope that you continue to track. We are at the beginning of a new month, right? Expose and expand. That is our X, our X double X, which creates 2020. Um, and so remember to focus on 20 full circle faces a month. It will take you there, not just faces. Go for 30 faces, go for it. But full circle faces, 20 full circle faces a month. That is the one thing that when you track, oh my gosh, and how can you, what's the activity that will get you to that win? 20 best questions, just ask, just ask 20 questions or more that fit that best category. And also that we show up to go up. And there are some things coming. Of course, you guys have showed up to here, whoop, whoop, right? We're going to turn off the recording and share a little bit, um, but also some things that are coming up outside of your regular unit meeting and outside of this lead and love. There is also next Wednesday night. Mary is hosting our win on Wednesday, and I'm going to be your guest speaker. I'm going to be sharing about the seven love gifts through Mary Kay. So you can invite guests to watch win on Wednesday. She always gives away Michael Kors purse and free product. So that's next Wednesday night. Um, you can look for the details. There's also her golden, what she call it? Not golden rules, golden something. I can't remember. Gold rush. Gold Rush Zoom um, will be the Saturday after that. So the 18th, I believe, is that date for that Saturday. So y'all just have your eyes and ears out. We have such an abundance of influence through the things that we can show up to go up. So we'll just close in prayer. Lord, thank you so much for all the women who are on live tonight. Oh my gosh, or today we had a, a great group show up live. So we just pray blessings over the women who are with us right now together. Together, the power of being together, even virtually, and for those who watch the recording, um, to have the courage um, to fight resistance, to have the boldness, to have the awareness, right? And to have to be aware also of the armor of God, to physically put it on, to do the things, Lord, um, to protect us, um, to help us be victorious day by day. It is a new battle. And we thank you in advance for the ultimate victory. And thank you for our victorious um, wins each day 
that we know with you, anything is possible. Amen. Mm -hmm. All righty.